but to make this wonderful, easy, beginner-friendly granny stitch cardigan, which I am so excited to bring to you guys, um, here are the supplies that you will need for this. A three-weight, preferably like a cotton yarn, but you can still use acrylic because the one that I made as my sample is done in acrylic, and it is wonderful. But um, I chose to use a, for this tutorial, I chose to use this Burnett Softy Cotton. And um, the color on this one, if you're interested in it, is uh, Fuchsia, and it's a three light, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And this one has 254 yards in this. So this is the one that I chose. Um, it says machine washable and dryable. And um, so yeah, so that's the one that I'm going to be using for this tutorial, but you can use any yarn you want. You can use a four weight yarn. You can use a three weight. You can use any weight that you want. It's because the entire pattern is customizable. That's the beauty of it. So any weight of yarn will work. And any size, hook size will work as well. And you'll see what I'm saying in just a moment. Uh, you will need a J hook, a 6.0 millimeter hook. You will need a yarn needle. And you will need a pair of scissors. This is done with a three weight yarn called uh, Premier Luna. And it is a... Um, Used, done with an eye hook, a 5.5 millimeter hook. And as you can see, here's what it looks like. And we are going to be making a J, using a J hook. And um, so our little hose that you see here will be a little bigger than this. So um, that's really the only difference. When I say chain three, the chain three is, a, is equal to a one double crochet. I would recommend making a swatch and you can take a copy of this if you would like. I'm not gonna read all that. And then here's the notes that I think is important. This piece consists of one back panel and two front panels. The beginning chain determines the width of the back side of your cardigan. The length will depend on how many rows you crochet. You can make it as short or as long as you want. Adjust the number of beginning chain stitches to produce the width you desire. So I think that will help you in making this beginner friendly. And this is a multiple of three plus two. For a medium to large, using a three weight yarn, I used a little less than a thousand yards. And that, that is using a DK three lightweight yarn. And you can use a thin four weight yarn as well. Also recommend that once you make about three rows, I would check the width because it's easier to start over and add more or take away stitches rather than realize that you've made it too large or too small once you get halfway through your project and have to start all over. So I would recommend once you get about even two rows, I think I would, if I were you, I would compare it to some of your previous garments that you've already made. Um, I would, you know, put it on your backside and see how far it comes up to the front. Um, those are the ways that I test how wide I need something is I usually take a garment that I've already made or I take a garment out of my closet and I compare it to the back side of the garment to see if I'm on the right track before I make the whole back panel because you do not want to have to take out a whole back panel and start all over. Um, so I hope that advice helps you guys. So for this project, like I said, you can chain however many you want to chain. So we will start with a slip knot. This right here. There we go. And so now let's change to three plus two. And, and like I said, if you look at that gauge swatch, that will give you an idea about how many you need to, um, using a J hook, about how many you need to chain. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're
circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would also recommend chaining loosely so that your bottom is not your bottom row is not too tight. So that was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So uh, for our base row, after we have our chain, we are going to make a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's our first chain from the hook and there's our second. So let's make a half double crochet in that second chain from the hook. Okay, and now you just make a half double crochet all the way to the end. And this is completely customizable. Just continue making a half double crochet all the way to the end. Okay, um, I will go ahead and meet you at the end when I get to my last stitch. Okay, so I just finished the last half double crochet, and this is our base row. Now for row two, we are going to chain three. One, two, three. That does count as a double crochet. Turn your work. We are going to work one double crochet in that same stitch that we made the chain three in. So now we have two double crochets in that first stitch. Now we are going to skip the next two stitches and in our third stitch, we are going to make three double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, and we're going to continue this all the way to until the last stitch. So you're going to skip two, and in the third one, make three double crochets. One, two, three. Just like that. So on this row, you're going to have two double crochets on one end and two double crochets on the other end. And of course, the first part of the double crochet on each end, the first double crochet on one end will be a chain up of a three, but it equals a double crochet. So continue this pattern all the way across till you get to this last stitch right here. When you get to that one, we're going to work two double crochets. Okay, so let's skip the next two. Work three double crochets. Here's what it looks like. And I will meet you at the end. Yeah, you can see that better up here. I will meet you when you get to those last skip twos in that last stitch. Okay, now that we are at the end, we're going to skip the la these two. And in the last stitch, we are going to make two double crochets. So it's equal on both ends. Now for row three, we're going to chain three turn our work and we're going to um, three double crochets in this first space between these two and this starts your repeat row row three and four will be your repeat rows so three double crochets
So now you have one double crochet on the end, three double crochets between between the uh, three double crochet and the two double crochet. Now we are going to work three double crochets between every three double crochet. So let's do the next one. Okay, like this. We'll do that all the way across. Three double crochets between every double crochet, every three double, I mean, yes, three double crochet between every three double crochet. When you get to the very end, you will make three double crochets right here. And then in this stitch right here, we're going to make one double crochet. Just to give you a heads up. That's the plan. Okay, so now we're going to our last space between our two double, uh, between our double crochets. We're going to work three double crochets. Just like that. Now we need to make a double crochet in the top of the chain of our chain three. There we go. <laughs> Make a double crochet. Now, <laughs> if you want, what I tend to do is I just make a double crochet in between there. But, you know, technically, professionally, it needs to be done in the top of the chain. <laughs> okay, so that was the first of your repeat row. And if I were you, I would take time out just to double check that you have this width, the width that you want. Okay, so that was your first of your repeat row. And you notice you ended with one double crochet on both ends. Right here. One double crochet on both ends. Okay, so now your um, row four is the uh, second of your repeat row. Chain three. Turn your work. Now you're going to work a double crochet in that same stitch that you made the chain three. And so you have two double crochets in that same stitch right there. Now you're going to skip these three and you're going to, because this is your granny stitch, you're going to work three double crochets in every space between the three double crochets. And you will have two double crochets on both ends of this row. So three double crochets. This is going to be a very easy, simple pattern for you to work that I think you have a lot of fun with. Okay, I will meet you at the end. Okay, so we just made our three double crochets in our last space here. We're going to skip these three, and in this last chain three, we're going to make two double crochets in the top of that chain. So we have one, Two. Now that is our repeat rows. These two rows, rows three and row four, are our repeat rows. And you notice that when you're crocheting, so that you don't have to think, every other row, it's one, two, one, two, one, two. And when I'm out somewhere and I'm in the car or sitting a uh, doctor's office or something like that, uh, what I do is I just always know that when I chain three, I turn my work. And if I have two here, I know I need one. And I immediately start working three double crochets in that very next space. 
between, you know, the double crochets. That's how easy this is. So continue working this all the way up um, with, I'll put this down a little bit so you can see. With this in mind, one and two, and just double crochet between, do three double crochets between every space there. Um, and I also wanted to remind you that when you're working on your length, when you get through with this, you're going to work four half double crochet rows at the top. And that will add another two inches at least to your top and then two inches to the bottom. So you need to, when you're trying this on, remember that you're going to add at least four to maybe five inches um, from between the top and the bottom. So just keep that in mind on your length. Okay, when you finish this panel, when you get the length you want, I will meet back up with you to start our half double crochet rows. Once you've finished crocheting your uh, granny stitch rows, you will need to make at least, now I did four, you could do about six if you want. Uh, that's up to you how many you feel like you need. For mine, I am going to do four half double crochet rows across the top. And so far, I have done um, three. And you should have the same amount of half double crochets across as you did on your base down here, where you did half double crochet rows before you started your granny stitch. So you should have that same amount. So I've got three rows already. And um, I'm going, like I said, I'm going to have four for mine. So chain one, half double crochet in the same stitch as your chain one. And even though I already have three, it works for the same as if you're working off of your granny stitch rows. And then you just continue all the way across, working a half double crochet row, just like that. Half double crochet in each stitch that you have, all the way across your back panel. Okay, so now we are in our last stitch there we go. And like I said, I worked four. One, two, three, four. You can work however many you want. That's the great thing about this is that it is completely customizable. So just cut off your yarn and leave it like this. So now we are going to work the front side. So here is what it should look like. Just like this right here. All right, so set this to the side and now you're going to work two front panels. Figure out the mat on your front panels. You gotta remember, your front panel is gonna be two panels. So you're gonna have, you're gonna seam one up here and then you're going to, in your middle section, you're going to start, you're going to seam up the other one. So you need two panels. So the two panels cannot come up to more than what you have across here. In my case, I have 58. So what I did on mine is I took the 58, I divided it by two, and I came up with 29. So when I took the 29, and I added the two because it has to be divisible by three. So it's 29 plus my two. I came up with 31. Well, I can already tell 31 is going to be 62. So, and I don't have 62 stitches. So I, I dropped down to the next number that was divisible by, divisible by three, which was 27. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go with 27 that because mine is divisible by three. So then you add your two, and so mine came to 29. So when I started crocheting, one half double crochet, 
in the next stitch to the chain, I end up with 28 half double crochets across here. And then my next panel will have 28 half double crochets, which is smaller than 58. And so the couple of stitches I have, I will just leave them blank in the middle because you'll seam up from this side and then you'll seam up on this side. And then whatever you got in the middle left over will, will just be empty. And you can have up to five or six empty stitches. That's up to you. My situation, I have two in mind because my 28 and 28 comes to 56. You just need to make sure that whatever you add, you come up with that when you add both your panels that they are not more than this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. So we are basically fixing to do the exact same things that we did on the front panel. I'm not gonna show that to you again because all you gotta do is follow the front panel instructions. It is exactly the same. Um, and I will meet you back after you finish your two front panels and um, we will do the assembly of this. So you need to start with your back panel. So now that you've got your back panel laid out, you just need to take your front panel and we're going to seam it right across there. And we are going to do the same thing with the other panel. Just like this. Now you see why it's important that your front panel cannot, the number cannot be greater. The combination of these two stitches together cannot be greater than your back panel. Okay, so let's go ahead and for the front panel, We can put some little clips to sort of hold it in place. And you can go ahead and put little clips on the other end if you'd like. Okay, now that we have those on there, you just need to take that long strand of yarn and we are going to thread our needle So once you have your needle threaded, we're going to seam up the shoulders here. And so I go through all of the loops just like this. And just remove your clips as you go down. And to give you an idea, because this is going to be the inside, and this is going to be your outside. That's going to be your shoulder. 
All right, so now you just need to weave it in. Since this is a wearable, I want to make sure I weave it in a few times. Okay, now you just fasten off just like that. And so now you've got one of your front panels. And now we're going to move over to this one. So we're going to turn it around. And, um,. We are going to, this was our ending. So I'm going to go ahead and weave that in. We can take our long strand that we have and we are going to seam up the other panel, the other front panel. And I should have two empty spots here. So see, make sure that comes to, that was the two empty spots I told you that I would have. So there they are. And so I'm gonna go through that beginning one a couple times just because it's the beginning. <laughs> make sure it's secure all right so now you just do the same as you did on the other side go through you know both of the loops on both sides And I'm going to all right so now we are going to weave this in like I said I like to do mine a few times Sure that okay now you need to fasten off so now you have your two panels right here so now that you got your two panels we are going to uh, do the sides now you can uh, you may need to measure how big you want your arm hole most people have theirs between seven and a half to eight inches. So I'm going to make mine seven and a half from the top, seven and a half from the top up here. And just make sure you got this, you know, laying nice and straight. And there it is. There's my seven and a half. And you do that for both sides. And to seam this up, you just go all the way. And once again, you put your clips in. I like to match up the holes like this. And this will help keep it straight. All 
Okay, and you're welcome to go ahead and do your other side if you want to. And thread your needle. And I would go ahead and weave it in from the bottom. And when I get to the top, when I get to the end there, I like to go ahead and kind of knot that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do basically the same thing. Okay. Now this one, since you're actually working with some chains instead of actual stitches like you wore the front, you just kind of space these out. Just make sure you get the front just make sure you get the two panels because you're going to be working with some chains and not actual stitches. And every now and then I like to pull that to make sure that it's not bunched up kind of tight. I like to stretch it out as I go. The end. I'm going to measure that again. Make sure that's seven and a half. Yep, it's seven and a half. All right. So I'm going to go back through and tie me a little knot. And we are going to weave that in just like this. Like I said, I like to do mine a couple times or a few times. So now you have one side done, and there's your arm hole. And now you just do the same thing for this side. Okay, so now you should have um, both sides seamed up, leaving a 7-inch to 8-inch arm. And like I said, uh, before you fasten this off, I would try it on just to see if the armhole is right. You may need to make it smaller or bigger. Now turn your project inside out and... Um, you have the option to go ahead and start your sleeves now, or you may just want to leave it like it is. Um, depends on how you want your sleeve. I'm going to do my front panels first, or I'm going to work all the way around. And um, we are going to Depending on how we're going to work a half double crochet all the way around the front panel, around the neck line here, and down the other side of the front panel. And then we're going to chain one turn and we're going to, to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to do probably about three rows of the half double crochet. And you may want to do more or less. That's just up to you. Or you could do double crochets. You know, whichever one it is that you want to do. But I'm going to do some half double crochets. And I'm still using my J hook. So you're going to um, 
slip stitch into this bottom corner space here. I like to grab the yarn that's behind it and kind of like slip stitch it. Now chain one, work one half double crochet in that same stitch. And the tricky part about this for your first round is that there really are no defined stitches. So you will more or less just be, um, oh, and then take this right here, your tail of that and crochet that in as you go. You will need to just insert your hook in each of these little openings that you see. And if you see that you got too many that are clustered together, you know, I would go back and take those out and try to space them out a little better. And I don't know if you can sort of see how I'm spacing mine. So like I'm going to have one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, you know, like that. Just like that. That's how mine's looking. All right, I will see you when you get to the other side over here. Okay, so now that you've got your three rows of half double crochet, and like I said, there's so much you can do to this to make it your own. You could have double crochet, single crochets. You could do whatever you want here. Um, I just chose to do three half double crochets. I just wanted to make it simple. But when I get my third row, and then you can also have as many rows as you want. Uh, when I get my third row, what I'm going to do is go ahead, and I've already worked one half double crochet in that last stitch. So I'm going to work two more, and this is for like the turning part of it. So that way in that last stitch, I have three. All right, so now you're going to work one half double crochet all the way across. And once again, you have to kind of find the stitches. Okay, I will meet you when you get to the end here. So I made it all the way across my first row uh, for the bottom edge. And so I'm going to go ahead and put two half double crochets in that last stitch. I already had one, so I did another one. Okay, so we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work. And we are going to make another half double crochet in every stitch across. You can do this for however many rows you need rows you need to. I'm going to do probably about four rows of this, of the half double crochet rows. Uh, you can do as many as you need. But the reason that I did at least two in that is so that it would have the same curve effect as uh, the other side. 
and see here's where it's at and that way it would blend in right here more than just being if it was just the one it would be kind of a sharp edge there okay so i will meet you um when you get your however many rows you're going to do like i said i'm going to make four and so i'll meet you back i'm probably going to have mine already fastened off and um you can do that as well and then we will start on the sleeves now that you have your front and pan uh, front panels sewn to your back panels we're going to work on the sleeves i went ahead and worked a few rows i did four half double crochet rows um i tried it on and i decided that i want about two more no probably about three more rows of half double crochets only because it's perfect when i'm wearing tank tops i don't need the extra rows but if i wear a t-shirt from underneath this and so i think i'm gonna do about three more half double crochet rows just to make it a tad bit longer just for when i wear t-shirts with it but with tank tops it's just fine i actually with the tank top i could have done just one row and it would have been just fine so um let's go ahead and get started on this one this is the last thing you need to do and you are done with this you will have a cardigan all right so there's your top or right here your half double crochet rows that's your top and all you're going to do is you're going to start um on the bottom here and leave a long tail insert your hook grab the yarn Grab the yarn from behind and pull it through and then chain one. All right, so now you're going to work a half double crochet in that stitch. And you're going to work a half double crochet all the way around. And there really aren't stitches to this, so you have to just kind of place it in there find you some holes just to put your hook and also you'll want to crochet that strand of yarn in as you go and you can count how many half double crochets you do if you want to so that when you do the other side you crochet the same amount since there aren't any stitches And see, I'm just crocheting all the way around. Just finding me some holes to put my hook. This is my favorite pattern that I have come up with. I love wearing this it's so easy Okay, now you just take your hook and slip stitch into the your top, your first half double crochet, just like that. Chain one, and you're going, chain one, and you're going to work one half double crochet in that same stitch, and then one half double crochet all the way around as many times as you want, and I think I'm going to do about seven for mine. But like I said, even that is just perfect for tank tops. Okay, um, I will see you at the end. About what seven rows looks like, and I tried to match it to where um, it'd be similar to my bottom here. Okay, um, you are now done. So with this pattern, you can make this basically in any yarn you want, any size hook you want, 
just make sure that, you know, check your measurement and just make sure that you have the multiple of three plus two and you're ready to go. You can just do this in any, any types of yarns. I mean, it is just endless. This is my favorite cardigan that I have ever created and it just feels so good when I'm wearing this. Um, everything fits perfect for on this one. And so I just wanted to share it with you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. And please, if you make it, post your pictures in my Facebook group page. I will leave the link below. I look forward to seeing them. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.